Well, today I have a Sola 24 volt 5 amp power supply. This one does run on 115 to 230 volts and it's totally dead. So a little backstory on this unit. It was in an industrial application. It had been running for years and years 24-7, 365 with no problems whatsoever. And then the power was shut down to do some maintenance on a different device. And when the power was restored, this power supply never came back to life. So I thought I'd tear into it and see if we can find anything going on with it. So I've got power going into it right here. I've got 128 volts going in. But if I measure the output, I've got zero volts coming out. So I can go on the ohm scale and check and see if I have a short here. And as you can see, it's charging. So I know there is no short. It's charging the output filter capacitors. So let's go ahead and disassemble it and get into it and see if we can find out what is going on in here. So we'll go ahead and start. All right, so I've got the cover off of it here and I went ahead and rewired the power cord back into it. You can see the components on the inside of it there. And I noticed, maybe you can pick it up. I hear a click when I apply power and a click when I remove power. I think it's that relay. So it must have a standby and a run power supply because I hear the relay energizing. So that tells me the fuse is good, the AC input fuse right here. And the standby power supply is good, but we may not have any run power supply. So let's go ahead and get the board completely out of this. So now to remove the board, I'm gonna have to take out these screws. Plus they've hidden two more screws underneath this label. That way they can tell if I've been into it. We have another screw on the other side. And then back here in the back, one more screw. And then the whole unit can be taken out. So the first thing I see that I don't like to see in something like this is this glue down in here. They have this glue on the capacitors as well back here. Sometimes that glue tends to become corrosive and do damage to some of the components, the traces especially. But let's go ahead and check a couple capacitors in here. I see a little capacitor right down in here. So I'm looking for the bootstrap capacitor and that's what actually charges up and runs the power supply for the first couple of cycles until the main power supply can support itself. So I sense that's what's missing. So I've got my ESR meter here. And so let's go ahead and check that little capacitor that I saw. So it checks just under 20 ohms. Now if that's a one microfarad capacitor, I'd be okay with that, but anything over a one microfarad, I'd like to see a lower ESR. Let's go ahead and check the output filter capacitors. Now they're still all connected in parallel, so I'd expect to see something close to zero, even if they're about one ohm a piece, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem at all. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that little capacitor and see what the value is before I go any further. So while I'm waiting for the solder sucker to get warmed up so I can remove that one capacitor and test it, I thought this unit might have power factor correction built into it because I see what looks like a bridge rectifier and it goes into a filter right here, then it goes through the FET, and then there's another filter capacitor right here that's after power factor correction. So I thought I'd go ahead and check and see. We should see about 160 to 170 volts here. And if it's got power factor correction, we should see uh, upwards of 300 volts here. So let's go ahead and power that unit back up. Power's on. So I see 163, so that's the 120 volt after full wave bridge rectification. And so you take the 120 and multiply it by approximately 1.414. And so after power factor correction, I'll be looking at this capacitor right here and I see 326 volts. So it does look like it's doing a little bit of power factor correction going on here. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh solder here. Well, the capacitor fell right out. So that's a 100 microfarad capacitor at 35 volts. So if I see more than about one ohm on this guy, I'm gonna suspect it as being bad. So let's go ahead and pop another one in there and see what we get. All right, so I've got a 100 microfarad at 50 volts. It's a 105C rated capacitor for temperature. All 
All right, so before we start it up, let's go ahead and ESR the new capacitor. Let me check my leads, make sure they're close to zero, and they are. That's what I would expect to see. Zero ohms on a 100 microfarad capacitor. Okay, so here we go, let's apply power. I heard a chirp and I see the green LED is lit. Let's go ahead and measure voltage on the output terminals. Let's put it in the DC volt range. 25.1 volts. Now this has a little trim pot right here that allows you to vary the voltage 22.2 all the way up to 29.6. So because it's a 24 volt power supply, let's go ahead and set it to 24 volts. So it appears to be working. Let's go ahead and get out my dummy load and we'll put a 5 amp load on it and make sure that it can handle a 5 amp load and also start with a 5 amp load. Okay, so I've got my power supply set up. I've got my dummy load set up right here and I'm using these 12 ohm resistors which when I switch each one of these switches on, it's gonna apply a two amp load to this power supply. So we're gonna test to make sure we can successfully pull off four amps, that's two of these on, and then we'll go for six amps and just see if it holds six. We'll see how much headroom it has left. Now this meter right here is measuring the voltage of the power supply. This meter over here is measuring the current of the power supply from the positive output to the meter and then back to the dummy load over here. All these are off. Let's switch the power on. And so we see 24 volts. This should be close to two amps. 1.9, 3.7, and it's pulled down to 22. Of course, there is gonna be a little bit of lead resistance because I'm using the long, I'm using the long test leads here of the meter. And so let's switch on the third one. 5.4 amps. Let's switch off the power now. Instantly it drains the storage capacitors, the AC input caps, and the power factor correction cap. And so now let's see if this power supply will start into a load of five and a half amps. That's gonna be the true test. And it does, 5.4 amps, 21.9 volts. So I'd say it's working quite well. So I'm gonna put my measurement probes, my voltage measurement probes right here at the power supply. And we'll see what kind of voltage it's actually putting out minus all the lead resistance. Here we go. 23.45 volts. It's only dropping half a volt. So do you think it would do eight amps? It's still putting out 6.4 amps. It's only rated at five amps. And it's keeping the voltage at 5.4 amps within half a volt of the 24 volt output unloaded. So I'm at 24.0 volts unloaded. At 1.9 amps, I've got 23.78. 3.7 amps, I've got 23.6 volts and 5.4 amps, I've got 23.43 volts. So I would say it's a success. Can it start with six and a half amps? Let's find out. And it can. Man, this thing is definitely overrated from what the specifications say. It may not last very long at that, high current, it may not be able to sink the heat adequately. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get it all put back together. All right, so here it is, all back together. I've even uh, taken my solvent of choice, acetone, and removed the bad Sharpie from the front of it so it looks good again. Let's power it up, power on. Green light came on, let's measure the voltage. twenty four point one three volts that looks good well I'm glad I have this repaired because I do have another project that's going to require twenty four volts at two amps and the power supply that I currently have my B and K analog adjustable power supply is barely good for two amps I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on repairing the Sola SDN 5-24-100P 24 volt 5 amp even a little bit more power supply if you enjoyed this video please consider making a donation to my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill,
and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.